you can go back and look at all of the classes. They're organized by date. They are also organized by day of each unit. And you can also tell in the title and in the description of each video what is covered in that video, as well as the video's clip art, the, the image that you see before you click on the, on the video. So uh, I encourage you all to do that. We, the biology team, is working on creating some shorter review videos for each of the standards that we've covered so far in class. I think that will also be pretty helpful to you all. So be on the lookout from that, for that. Should be done by this weekend and they will also be uploaded to YouTube. Um, what else do I want to say? Some of you may not be in the Remind chat, especially you, Malachi, just because you've just joined the class. So what you should do is text, not test, text, at, this in quotes, at R-U-D-D, H-B-I-O-2, 81010. Wait, you said do what? I sent a message to the chat, but, Text the at symbol, so at rud h bio two r u d d h b i o two to eight one zero one zero, and that will allow you to join our remind chat, just so I can send notifications to you all and reminders. All right, I'm gonna do it right now. Okay. So today we are going to continue our discussion about inheritance. Yesterday we talked about complete dominance. Uh, red. H. All right, I did it. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, so I want you all to continue to practice good note-taking skills. One thing that I'm noticing is a big difference between this class and my other biology classes that they are not taking as many notes as I assume you all are taking because you're able to give me information about things that we haven't talked about in a long time, which means that you have access to that information because you can flip back in your notes and find it. So I want to encourage them to take more notes, but for those of you who are ready to take the next step in your performance in this class, note taking is going to be central in progressing in your progression. So always you should write down the title of the lesson which is inheritance part two you should write down the date which will give you um an opportunity to come back and look for this specific lesson today is october 28th 2020 and you should also write down that it is unit seven day three the objective of today's lesson biologists will be able to predict offspring ratios of complete i'm sorry of incomplete co-dominance and multiple allele inheritance by practicing problems. So we're gonna do a lot of practice problems today. I definitely need you all to have access to your notes. It seemed as though you all grasped complete dominance very well yesterday, I was impressed, but we need to continue to, to practice with it. Okay. So before we jump back into the offspring ratio lesson, I want to do some brief reviews. So those of you who just went ahead and knocked out the warm up, you saw this question. And I want to remind you all that each unit we've got obviously several warm ups, several exit tickets. As long as you have them done by the end of the unit, by the last day of the unit, which is test day then you will receive full credit for those warm-ups. Okay, but uh, I still need to see you all doing these. I know they can be easy, they can be easy to forget, but um, they, they are still worth some points. So make sure you're knocking out the warm-ups and exit tickets. This was the last question on today's warm-up. It says, a strand of DNA reads AAC, CGG, GCA. What would be the amino acid sequence produced from this DNA? So some of you may have been tempted to jump straight from DNA to amino acids. But before we can translate to amino acids, we have to transcribe 
to mRNA. So the mRNA has to come first. So can someone help me out with that? What would be my mRNA? What does A become when I transcribe it? T. It Wait, would. No, 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 no. You, you, you. Good, you, exactly. Yeah. Exactly, good. I'm glad you caught yourself. So what Ayana just, you know, in the span of half of a second realized is that when we're transcribing DNA to mRNA, we cannot use T. RNA does not have the letter T. It does not have the nitrogen-based thymine. Instead, it has the nitrogen-based uracil, which we indicate with the letter U. Okay, so A is transcribed to U. There it is again, A is transcribed to U. What happens with C? It's transcribed to G. It's transcribed to G, good. <clears throat> And then C again becomes G. What happens to G? Turns into well, transcribes to C. Excellent. And then C becomes G again, and we've got another U. All right, now this is when we can go and begin the process of translation. We have two charts that we can use. I only included one of them here, but either one is fine to use. It's just a matter of preference. Whichever one you feel most comfortable using use. As I told you all, I'm most comfortable using this one. Uh, I've obviously used and learned to use both of them, but this one has always been a little bit easier for me. And the way it works just quickly is you're going to find the first letter of your codon. A codon is a group of three nitrogen bases, as we have here, U, U, G. That's a codon. So you find the first letter of your codon, which in this case is U, and you start at the center of the circle. And you're going to move outward with each of the next two letters. So my second letter is U. I'm going to move outward right here into this section of the diagram. <clears throat> and again, I'm going to move outward towards my third letter, which is G, into this section of the, of the diagram, which tells me that the amino acid is leucine, which we shorten to LEU. Can anyone do the next one? R E. Say it again. I said I'll do it. Okay, do it. All right, so you start with G. Mm -hmm. Then you go up to C. Then you go to C. They go to C again, it will be alanina. Alanine, good. I thought that was A. So we, thank you, Justice. That was excellent. We shorten it to ALA. And then the last one, can anyone knock that one out for us? Uh, that will be arginine, arginine yep. or something. Ar arginine. So ARG, excellent. So I don't want you all, <clears throat> excuse me, to forget this. When we first introduced this concept, you all grasped it very quickly. And so I want to make sure that this is still at the top of our minds as we get further away from the first time we talked about this. We need to keep coming back to it because I guarantee you it will be on the EOC. So good job. So yesterday we introduced complete dominance. And in complete dominance, your dominant allele will hide the recessive allele. That means that if I have a heterozygous genotype, I've got one dominant allele and one recessive allele, then I'm going to have the dominant trait. The dominant allele is going to hide the recessive allele. And so there's no indication of the recessive allele being present at all. You only see the dominant trait. We call that complete dominance. But of course, biology is much more complicated than that. If everything was just a matter of expressing the dominant trait or the recessive trait, then we would have a world of binaries. You would either have brown skin or pink skin. You would have, you'd be six feet tall or you'd be five feet tall. There wouldn't be any range of outcomes. Okay, so we need to talk about the other types of inheritance that lead to these ranges of outcome. They lead to things like spots and stripes on some animals and in some plants. 
they lead to things like multiple colors, not only in our skin color and in our hair color, but also if we think about plant species, we know that there are many colors of roses, for example. You can have a white rose, a pink rose, a red rose, same species of flowers, but different colors, okay? And this is a result of these different types of inheritance that we'll talk about today. The first type that we will mention is called incomplete dominance. So yesterday we talked about complete dominance. Today, we'll first mention incomplete dominance. In incomplete dominance, neither allele is dominant or recessive. Which means that when both alleles are present, they blend together. The biologically sound or biologically formal way of saying this is if I have a heterozygous genotype, then I'm going to have what's called a blended phenotype, meaning it's a blend of the dominant and the recessive. They both show up in a mixture. So if my dominant phenotype is red and my recessive phenotype is, is white, then my blended phenotype is going to be pink. So to do this, we typically don't use a capital and a lowercase letter. We reserve capital and lowercase letters for complete dominance. To indicate incomplete dominance, we use an apostrophe for the recessive allele. It still gets a capital letter, but it gets a capital letter with an apostrophe. And we call that prime. We call the apostrophe prime. So if I have R apostrophe, then I would say R prime. So our skin colors aren't their incomplete dominance? Um, not quite. They're, we're going to continue to talk about our skin color, you know, is, is a polygenic trait. It is a result of many different genes. But and we're going to talk about something else tomorrow that will really be what, our, what happens with our skin color. Okay. But I'm glad you're thinking about that. So with incomplete dominance, you end up with a blended phenotype. If you have a hetero, <clears throat> excuse me, if you have a heterozygous genotype, you end up with a blended phenotype. Now I want you all to kind of pick up on this pattern. As we think about these different patterns of inheritance, complete dominance, incomplete dominance, co-dominance, we're going to emphasize what happens with the heterozygous genotype. That's really what we're most interested in. If I've got homozygous dominant, then it's going to obviously express the dominant trait. If I've got homozygous recessive, then it's going to obviously express the recessive trait. What we want to be most interested in to differentiate between these types of inheritance is the heterozygous genotype. What happens when I have one dominant allele and one recessive allele? That will determine what kind of inheritance I'm talking about. With complete dominance, my heterozygous genotype expresses the dominant trait. With incomplete dominance, my heterozygous genotype expresses a blended phenotype. It's not quite the dominant, but it's also not quite the recessive, it's blended. Any questions about anything that I've said or anything that's on the screen so far? No. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. So I asked you all to write down <clears throat> the steps to solve a Punnett square yesterday. But I had my doubts in my last class about how many people actually did it. So I wanna ask 
that you all help me solve and fill in these blanks. So go back to your notes from yesterday. If you hadn't written, if you didn't write these steps down, now is the time to do it. So the first step, determine what each blank means. Make a key. Which should, which should be in those? I'm sorry, I just gave away the last one. Um, <laughs> but determine what each blank means. What should that blank be? Uh, Adi or Adi? I don't want to pronounce it. Yes, correct. Thank you, Castro. It should be allele. It's a, it's a hard word to say, allele. And then make a key. I gave that one away. Step two, split parental genotypes on the blank of the box. Outside. outside. Excellent. On the outside of the box. Step three, blank together. Combine. Combine, yeah. Now, I added this word today, cross, because you'll hear me refer to do your cross or cross the alleles or cross the parents or what happens when you cross something. This is what I'm talking about when you combine them and you actually fill in the, the spaces of the Punnett square. Step four, blank determine blank and blank ratios. Answer question. Blank determine blank and blank ratios. Okay, the first word is analyze. We analyze in order to determine the genotypic and you should definitely know this last one now. Phenotypic. Phenotypic ratios. And then you just answer the question. So we're gonna do a lot of practice problems today. Wow, how is it already 1050? Okay, that's not good. Starting now. So hopefully you still have Canvas pulled up. There is an assignment that should be right under your warm up called U7D3 whiteboard practice. If we were in school, we, we would be doing all of these problems on a whiteboard, and each of you would have your own whiteboard, and you'd have to write it out and then hold it up and show me. But obviously, we don't have that option right now. So, what I want you all to do instead is open up this document. It will ask you to make a copy of it. Per usual, you'll make the copy, you'll save the copy in your biology Google folder. I would love it if you all would get in the habit of changing your names or changing the name of the document so that your name is in it. We're gonna work on Pink problems, you're gonna see that the pink problems will be highlighted in pink at the top. We'll do those together, and then I'll give you all time to work on the blue problems independently. But you should be writing all of this down in your notes. No need to do it electronically, but um, if you have a pen and paper out, 
a notebook. This is a great thing to include in that notebook. Okay. So remember, these are word problems, so you have to pay attention to the words in the problem. That's what a word problem means. You'll see the words dominant, recessive, and incompletely dominant. Now that we've talked about incomplete dominance, you know what that means. That means that if there's a heterozygous genotype, the phenotype is going to be blended. So the first problem, do I need to slow down? Have you all pulled up the document? You can type into it. I made a copy of it. Okay, great. So the first problem says, brown is incompletely dominant to white in mice, resulting in a tan phenotype. If a brown mouse mates with a white mouse, what phenotype would their offspring have? All right, so the cool thing about this is that they gave us the genotypes of the parents. So we really don't even need to guess or we, we don't need to work too hard mentally or intellectually to figure that out. They gave it to us. So here's our key. Obviously, brown is the dominant allele, but it's incompletely dominant to the recessive allele, which is white. So we're going to use B for the dominant allele, and we're going to use B prime for the recessive allele. This is, yeah. Okay. So if I have two dominant alleles, meaning B, B, then I obviously end up with the dominant trait, which is brown. If I have two recessive alleles, B prime, B prime, then I end up with the recessive trait, which is white. But if I have one of each, so it's my heterozygous genotype, I've got B and I have B prime, then I end up with my blended phenotype, which is tan in this case. Tan is a mix of brown and white. So I've made my key. My next step is to put my parental genotypes to split them up on the outside. So B, B, B prime, B prime. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to show that one. But when you do the cross, you can see how it becomes B prime B, B prime B, B prime B, B prime B. They are all heterozygous. If I cross two homozygous, if I cross a homozygous dominant with a homozygous recessive, then all of the offspring are going to be heterozygous. They get one dominant allele from one parent and they get one recessive allele from the other parent, resulting in a blended phenotype. So what's the ratio here? How many brown mice should I have? Or how many brown offspring do I have? What do you want to <laughs> So that was too much. That was too much. I don't is know it what zero? <laughs> One, Alicia, go ahead. Is it zero? Yes. Um, but let me see what other. That's correct. Ayana, did you have a question though? Yeah, I was saying, can you repeat the question? But I didn't mean oh. to talk at the same time as the rest of them. That's okay. Gabby, did you have something? I saw you were unmuted too. I was just asking what you meant by how many, but. Okay. So. 
these Punnett squares allow us to see offspring ratios. And what, we're, what, what we do, what we see here is that each of these squares represents one offspring. So I've got four squares. How many of these squares, how many of these offspring are brown? Alicia just told us zero and she's right because the brown genotype is BB. I don't have BB anywhere. I have B prime B, B prime B, B prime B, B prime B. I don't have BB, so zero brown mice. How many tan mice do I have? Zero. Hmm. Let's check that 100%. again. No, no, two, two. I'm sorry. It's 100. Okay. Let's check. Ayana, where are you seeing two? Uh, wait. No, I don't see. I don't see two. Wait, it's, I, it's on the right, the left side of the, the box. What, no, what's that? No, oh, oh, oh. Okay, I mean, now be careful, Gabby, because. Yes, we see a B prime, B prime, or we see a white my mouse here, but this is the parent. We only are interested really in the offspring, which are inside of the box. Inside of the box, I have four of the same genotype, B prime B, which we could also write as B, B prime. It doesn't matter which order you write these letters in. Maybe that's what's confusing you all. So B prime B is the same thing as B, B prime. So zero brown mice because there are no BB, there are no BB. Four tan mice, all of my offspring, like Alicia said, 100% of my offspring are B prime B. And zero white mice. I'm confused. Um, okay. Because on the thing is, stop. Oh my gosh. Sorry about that. Um, no on the on your little screen there, when you look at ten, it says B B prime, and then when you look in the box, it says B prime B. So I'm confused how that's the same thing. Right. Okay. So. Put it very simply. So B, B prime is the exact same thing as B prime B. It's almost like it's almost we can picture it like this. It's similar to this. What's four times three? Twelve. Yeah. And what's three times four? Twelve. Twelve. So it doesn't matter which order you write them in. Do you see that, Ayana? Mm -hmm, I see it. Good. So I can write B, B prime or B prime B. It's the same thing. They will both end up being, they will both end up being tan. But I'm glad you asked that question. I could tell that that was probably what was confusing people. Thank you for saying that. You are welcome. Okay, let's keep going. So it says blue is incompletely dominant in a parrot feather color. Incompletely dominant. If a green bird mates with a yellow bird, what is the likelihood that they will have a blue offspring? Blue is incompletely dominant in a parrot feather color. So someone help me with my key, please. What should go on my key? Wait, first of all, what, what letter should we use for the, for the allele? Could be anything.
B? Sure, we can use B again. That's fine. So if I have, I'm just going to write out my three genotypes right here in my key. It's kind of big. So if I have my homozygous dominant, then what is my phenotype going to be? If I have BB, what is that? Blue. Yep. That is going to be blue. This is kind of what you all should be writing in your notes too, as I go through this. If I have my heterozygous phenotype, which is, which would be B prime B or B B prime, what does that give me? Green or yellow? It should be green. Good. And then if I have my homozygous recessive, which would be B prime again, B prime, B prime, what does that give me? Yellow. Hello. Good. I'm having struggling. I'm struggling to write my apostrophes with the stylus. Okay. So in the question, it says if a green bird mates with a yellow bird. So that means my two parents are green and yellow. I've got one green parent and one yellow parent. So now I need to write those genotypes on the outside of the box. I'm going to do my green on the top, but it doesn't really matter. So my green genotype is B prime B. And I've got a yellow parent as well that I'll write on the left. And my yellow genotype is B prime B prime. So now I've got my two parents. I've got their four total alleles. Now I just need to do my cross. So what should go in this top left box here? Let me, write a, let me number my boxes. One, two, three, four. What should go in box number one? Hello? What goes in box number one? B prime, B prime. Thank you. B prime, B prime, which of course is yellow. What goes in box number two? B. 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 <laughs> Who's that? I heard multiple people. B and a B prime. Excellent. Thank you, Gabby. B, B prime, which of course is green. I thought maybe that was Joseph or Castro, someone else who was talking. Would you like to do number three? This one, uh, B prime, B prime. B prime, B prime. B prime. And then in box number four, what should I get? B prime B. Good. B prime B, which is green. Now, again, these are the exact same thing. B, B prime, and B prime B, same thing. Okay, so let's not, let's not be too hard or uh, too, what am I trying to say? Let's not overthink that. But for those of you who maybe didn't, understand how we got these crosses yesterday or just now 
all I'm doing is taking each of these letters and I'm putting them into the box. I'm just putting them into each row or each column that they are next to. All right, let me come back over here. So we did everything correctly. We put our parents where they were supposed to be. We did our cross correctly. So it's asking for the likelihood that they will have a blue offspring. How many blue offspring do we have here? Zero. We don't have any blue offspring. How many green do we have? Two. Two, and how many yellow? Two. Two, excellent. So what's the likelihood of a blue offspring? Zero percent. Zero percent. Oh, it didn't even answer it. Fix that. Well, I'll do it later. So zero percent, right? You always want to make sure you're answering the question. Good job, Castro, and everybody else who chipped in on that. Okay. Black is incompletely dominant to white. What would be the phenotypic ratio of offspring if two gray cats made it? So what letter do we want to use this time? Are we going to go B again, or is somebody going to throw out a, another letter? I wasn't finished uh, writing the second one. Okay, go back. Okay, thanks. I'm done now. A C? Okay. C. C. We C. like the, the C for cat. So again, I always start with my key. This time we're using C's. So my homo dominant genotype would be two C's. What does that give me? If black is incompletely dominant to white, what is my phenotype there? Black. Good. Okay. Um, what about C prime? Oops. C prime C, that's my heterozygous. What does that give me? What's my phenotype there? White. Um, it's not white. Oh, it's gray? It's gray, good. Is it spelled with an E or an A? Okay, A. And then my homo recessive would be white. I'm sorry, what is the gray again? The gray is our blended phenotype. So when I mix black and white, I end up with gray. And it's my heterozygous Heterozygous, you know equals blended pheno, it's an ugly H in pheno, but a heterozygous geno equals a blended pheno. 
It's 11.11, make a wish. Okay. So it says that we've got two gray cats that are mating. So which, which of these genotypes should I be putting on the outside of my Punnett square? Um, C prime C. Good, C prime C. Because they are both gray. And now I do my cross. So we should go in, let me number my boxes really quickly. One, two, three, four. What should go on box number one? Square one. C prime C. C, C prime. Good. Excellent. C prime C prime. So this would be white. What about in box number two? C prime C. In box two? Yes, you're right. <laughs> C mm -hmm. prime C. I know I, I, uh, I caused some worry there. What about in box three? C, C prime or C. C prime C. Good. We can say either way. They both result in the same phenotype. And then lastly, box C. four. C, C. CC, and that's black. So how many white offspring do we have here? One. One. How many gray? Two. How many black? One. One. Excellent. So. That's the answer that we got over here. Get our cross correctly, I assume. Good. All right. So I'm gonna have you all work on the next three problems later because we're we only have 20 minutes left and I, we have a couple, at least one more concept to introduce. So we'll come back to that. The other concept that we need to introduce is called co-dominance. This is when you don't have really a dominant allele or an excessive, uh, sorry, a recessive allele. They have equal dominance. So your heterozygous genotype results in a phenotype that shows both of the traits. So this could be spots, this could be coats that have multiple colors, like the cat that you're seeing there. This could be stripes. So again, we wanna focus on what happens to the heterozygous genotype. <laughs> Question? Uh, what are you doing? Who? What are you doing? Justin, you have a question? <laughs> okay, he must not realize that he's. So why the your brother's not in your ear if you're in the zone? Nope. Take him off. Take him off. You didn't even have any. Okay. <clears throat> so complete dominance. Incomplete dominance, our heterozygous genotype still expresses the dominant trait. In incomplete dominance, our heterozygous genotype expresses a blended trait. And in co-dominance, our heterozygous genotype expresses both traits. Any, any questions about this?
No. Okay, thank you. So let's look at another practice problem. If black chickens with the genotype BB are co-dominant to white chickens with the genotype WW, show a cross between a black chicken and a black and white chicken. So here with co-dominance, you're, you're noticing something new. We're using two different letters for our alleles. Instead of a capital B and a lowercase b, or a B and a B prime, now we're using a B and a W. So two different letters for our different alleles here. Black chickens are co-dominant to white chickens. Show a cross between a black chicken and a black and white chicken. Okay, let's come back over here now. I'm not losing you guys, hopefully. We've got co-dominance. So again, I always start with my key. And I write out my possible genotypes. In this case, I've got BB. What, what phenotype does the genotype BB give me? Black? Yep, this would be black chickens. What about the phenotype WW? What does that give me? White. White, excellent. And then what about the genotype, the heterozygous genotype BW? Black and white. Black and white. I'm glad you said that because now we're no longer talking about a blended phenotype. It's not gray anymore. It expresses both of them, black and white. All right, so my word problem says that we need to show a cross between a black chicken and a black and white chicken. So I'm gonna write my parents' genotypes Again, I've got my black chicken on top and my black and white chicken on the on the left. I'm going to number my boxes again. One, two, three, four. What's the genotype in box one? BB. BB. Oops. Oh. Let's use. What about box two? What's my genotype there? BB. 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 What about box three? WB. WB. And what about box four? WB. I'm going to write BW just so that you all can see it written differently, but know that they are the exact same thing. Okay. So my question is, well, there is, it didn't ask a question. I guess we're just, oh, the percent chance of a white offspring. Well, this is black. This is black. What is the phenotype in boxes three and four? What's my phenotype in boxes three and four? Black and white. white. They're both black. Yeah, they're both black and white. So I have zero white chickens here, which means my chances of a white offspring are 0%. Okay, let's do another. 
Red is co-dominant to white and flowers. If a red flower mated with a white flower, what are the chances their offspring will be spotted? Red is co-dominant to white. If a red flower mated with a white flower, what are, their chan what are the chances their offspring will be spotted? Maybe some of you are getting so good at this that you can almost kind of see it in your head. But we're still going to write it out. Per usual, I make my key. I'm going to use the letters R and W just to make it easy on myself because we've got red co-dominant to white. So if I've got R, R, that gives me a red flower. If I've got W, W, that gives me a white flower. What genotype am I missing here? The R and W. Yep. What, and what is that genotype called? And I've got one of each. Spotted. Yeah, this would be spotted. Excellent. Now my question says that we are mating a red flower with a white flower. So I write my parents. I'm going to use. I'm going to use uh, yellow for white. All right. I number my boxes. One, two, three, four. What goes, what genotype goes in box one? RW. What about box two? RW. What about box three? RW. And box four? RW. They literally are all RWs. So I'm just going to write all my R's at once and all my W's at once. So what does that mean? What is the phenotype of all of their offspring? Spotted. All of the offspring will be spotted. So the chances of an offspring being spotted here are 100%. Let's see, is there one that I want to focus on? No, brown dog mates with a spotted dog. Oh, I yeah, I'm not doing this one. Um, okay. Mm, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Let me make up a problem to challenge you all since you are my honors class after all. <clears throat> Purple and red, red. Um, a red flower is co-dominant with a blue flower when a when two flowers are mated they produce 100 offspring of those let's see No, I don't want co-dominant. I want incomplete. Um, 
of those, uh, bear with me. I'm trying to come up with this off the top of my head. Okay, of those 25 are purple and 75 are red. Nope, oh, 75 are blue. Let's go with that. Ha ha. What are the genotypes of the parents? Say genotypes and phenotypes. Of the parents. Okay, a red flower is incompletely dominant to a blue flower. When two flowers are mated, they produce 100 offspring. I made the numbers easy for you. Of those, 25 are purple and 75 are blue. What are the genotypes and phenotypes of the parents? Does anybody know where to start on this problem? Any ideas about where to start? Perhaps we've started in this same place the entire time. Yeah, we start with the key, right? Excellent, Ayana. Man, I've got some smart students in this class. You start with your key. Always start with your key. Don't leave the information in your brain for too long. Just go ahead and get it down on paper. <clears throat> okay, so what should I put in my key? If a red flower is incompletely dominant to a blue flower, what goes in my key? Two, two R's. Okay. okay. Yeah, I can start with two R's. And that's my homozygous dominant Genotype. So what's the phenotype of two R's? The red flower. Red. Good. What's next? What's my next genotype? Keep in B mind, we are, I'm sorry, I heard someone getting ready to talk. B and B. Hold on, we are incompletely dominant here. So what does that mean about what my letters should look like? Prime. I should be using a prime. I should be using prime. So what's my homozygous recessive genotype then? R prime R? R prime. Homozygous recessive, so R prime, R prime. And what does that give me? What phenotype is that? Purple? Um, no, or because, blue? yes, this would be blue because it says that red is incompletely dominant to blue. So that means that blue is your recessive, your homozygous yeah. recessive. And then my heterozygous, meaning I have one of each allele, I've got the dominant R and I've got the recessive R prime 
What phenotype does that give me? If this is incomplete dominance. Purple. Purple. Okay. Now, our goal in this case is not to figure out anything about the offspring. We already know information about the offspring. We know that there are 100 of them. And of those 100, 25 are purple. So let me just write that here. We've got 25 purple. And I've got 75 blue. My task, my goal is to figure out information about the parents. This time, I don't know anything about the parents. I know information about the offspring, but not the parents. But that just means that I need to work backwards. So I'm going to make my Punnett square. Of course, I still ha only have those four boxes. Box one, box two box three and box four. Now, what, do you, does it, what does anyone notice about the ratio here, 75 to 25? What could that be simplified to? You said simplify 20. Five and seventy-five? Yes. In other words, if I have a sorry, if I have a fraction twenty-five over seventy-five, can I simplify that fraction? One third. Yes, good. One over three. So this this means that in my Punnett square, I have one, dang it. One purple flower and three blue flowers. So I'm gonna just write in my three blue flowers in three random boxes. I'm going to do boxes one, two, and three because they come first. R prime, R prime, R prime, R prime, R prime, R prime. And then in my last box, I have that one purple flower. So box four is going to be purple, which is R, R prime. So now that we have the offspring written out in our Punnett square, I know it's 1135, we're almost done with this. Can we figure out, can we work backwards to figure out what my parents' genotypes are? Well, we can, it's pretty simple actually. This R here needs to have come from right here. That R prime, I'm sorry, needs to have come from right there. This R prime needs to have come from right there. So that means in both of those places, I have R prime, R prime. Down here, this R prime had to have come from right here. And I'm sorry, this R had to have come from right here. And this R prime had to have come from right here. So this is actually R, and this is R prime. Does everybody see how we did that? Any questions about that? We're, we haven't answered the question yet, but does anybody have any questions about how I've gotten to this point?
No, but I'm lost. Okay. <clears throat> Are you lost about anything specifically? Yeah, the last bit that you did. Okay. So, let me see. Typically, when we are given, let me just scroll back up. Typically, when we are given the information about the parents first, Diana, and everybody else, we drop, this is how I've always seen it. You just drop these letters into their boxes. So this B prime gets dropped right there into that place, right there, B prime. This B prime gets slid over into this B, into this space. Does that make sense? So these letters, yeah. these, yeah. these alleles are coming from either up here or over here. So if I know which alleles are in the box, then I can go the opposite direction as well. If I know that there's a B prime here, then it had to have come from this space. And if there's a B prime here, then it had to have come from this space. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's that's what we just did. We just went backwards. Instead of taking them from outside of the box and putting them in, we looked inside of the box and took them out. Okay, thank you for explaining we're gonna, that. We're going to continue. We're going to do more practice with this, but let's just answer the question really quick because I know we're already at 1138. Thank you. So the question is, what are the genotypes and phenotypes of the parents? <clears throat> um, well, I've got two parents, obviously. Although I just saw some news that said that, well, we saw it in the documentary too. Three parent babies are probably on the way. But in this case, we still have two parents. Parent one and parent two. So parent one is on top. Let's just say parent one is on top. What's parent one's genotype? B prime, wait, R prime, R prime? R prime, R prime. Good. And so what's their phenotype? Blue. Blue. And parent two, what is their genotype? R prime R. And so what is their phenotype? Purple. Good. Purple. All right, so we're gonna continue to practice with this. Sometimes you will be asked to work backwards. They'll give you information about the children, meaning they'll give you the ratio of the children's genotype, of the offspring's genotype. And you'll be asked to figure out information about the parents, but good job today. Um, there is an asynchronous assignment. I'm sorry we ran over. This is just a lot to teach. So. Um, I will send you guys a remind message to remind you to knock that out, as well as the exit ticket, which is just three questions. But you did a good job today, and we'll continue to practice with this stuff. Thanks for staying over. See you tomorrow. See ya.